Okay, so we're going to go over the pop quiz that we took last week and a couple additional questions and then a general summary about uh, substitution reactions, which will be the pop quiz coming up. All of these will be on exam four. Okay, so we're looking at a reaction of an alkene with HBr. This is a two-step reaction that we discussed in class. There's an alkene, um, and it's reacting with the electrophile. So the nucleophile, which is the alkene, reacts with H, which is the electrophile. In step one, we get a carbocation intermediate, and bromide is made. There's a major, since the carbons, the two carbons that are form the double bond have different carbon bonding structures, um, well, we see that there'll be a major product and a minor product. The major product will be the tertiary carbon, while the minor will be the primary carbon. Each of these make the bromide ion, the other intermediate. In the second step, in the second step, bromide reacts with the carbocation to form the It makes forms the bond at the carbon site, the major product. Then, um, so most likely to form is the major product, so we would expect C to be formed. When we're looking at the signs of delta H and delta S, we're going to do the bond um, inventory. See that in the reactants, the carbon double bond carbon, one of the bonds is broken, an HBr bond is broken. <coughs> Excuse me and a CBR bond and a CH bonds are formed. This would overall produce an exothermic reaction. We also see for the delta S sign, one of the reactants is a gas. We're also going two products to one, so delta S would be negative. So we would pick D as the delta H exothermic and delta S is also less than zero. Here for the energy diagram for this particular mechanism, so I'm going to draw a little bit different um, just to highlight the carbon double bond carbon. And we see that the first step, just like before, forms a carbocation. And then in the second step, the carbocation reacts with bromide and is formed there. Okay, so now we just have to assign, so this happens in two steps. First step, is um, two bonds, a carbon bond and an HBr bond are broken and a CH bond is formed. This is going to be endothermic to slightly, well, it's going to be endothermic. The second reaction is definitely going to, second step is going to be exothermic. And B is the only one that represents this two-step mechanism in this way. Although, in general, the first step is given as neutral, not quite endo or exo. The next question, we just ask, what are the nucleophiles in this mechanism? So that would be the alkene and bromide. Step one is the alkene. Step two is bromide. Okay, so here's the mechanism that we did in worksheet one. We're asked to find the product of this reaction under a water and acid catalyst. So we'll go through this fairly quickly. You should have this in your notes already, but... You want to see it again. So the first step is that the nucleophile reacts with the hydrogen, the electrophile, and the acid to form a carbocation and to create a CH bond. The next step, this intermediate reacts with water to make the second intermediate, which is OH2+. Plus. Then this second intermediate reacts with water once again, an acid-base reaction, to regenerate the catalyst and form the product, which is the alcohol. So I didn't put that H3O plus was generated, but yes, in this last step, H3O plus is generated. So we would make product D in this mechanism. The carbocation stability will direct the major product of this reaction. Doing the in energy inventory, we're breaking a CC bond and an OH bond and forming a CH bond. There, we would consider this to be endothermic.
step two, we're forming a CO bond, which is exothermic. And then here we're breaking an OH bond and forming an OH bond, which we would consider to be pretty neutral. We'll discuss this in the form of energy diagram later in the video. Okay, so now we have a slightly different arrangement. Um, we have an alkene, but there's an electron withdrawing group. This electron withdrawing group is going to be destabilizing the positive charge. It stabilizes negative charges, it's going to destabilize positive charges. So when we look at our mechanism, we get the same first step. The nucleophile of the, of the alkene reacts with the electrophile of H on the acid. And now we see there's two possible sites for the carbocation. In general, we'd say that, well, the top has three carbons bonded to it while the bottom one only has two carbons. So we would think just from energetic standpoint that maybe the top one would be the most stable. But because of the electron withdrawing group it destabilizes that positive charge and we would see the bottom one would be the most stable. So that electron withdrawing um, destabilizes it, affects the major product, so we can see the major product is going to come at this carbon now because of the stability of the carbocation. Two steps later, we would put the OH on that carbocation using the same mechanism that we just discussed and pick A. So here we have a, a reaction under the acid catalyst, and we say, well, what would happen? This is an additional question that wasn't on the pop quiz, but we said, what would happen if we did the reaction, we did our really low temperatures? If that was the case, then we'd only expect a major product at low temperatures, right? There's not enough energy to make the minor product. So if we only had the major product, we would see that the most stable carbocation will be on the carbon that's the mo that has the most carbons bonded to it. That would be, so the first step of the mechanism is shown here, forming the carbocation there. So at this spot, two steps later, OH will attach to it. We'll have the alcohol at this site. And we'd only make one alcohol at these low temperatures. So this is the case where, there's another way to say, what happens if there's only major product form. Another way is to ask if we're only interested in the major product is what is most likely to form. But if it's, what are all the possibilities that can be formed? In this case, there would have been two, but at low temperatures, we'd only expect the major product formed. In this case, we see we're running at high temperatures, so we have both major and minor products. So we have the same mechanism, first step, Electric nucleophile reacts with the electrophile. Major product and minor product. So the carbocation will be on the most substituted carbon in the major. This is the bond, the hydrogen bond, or the CH bond will be formed on top. Or we could have the carbocation formed here, right, at the secondary carbon, which would be the minor product. Two steps later, using the same mechanism that we did on the worksheet in the previous problems, we see that the major product would be the OH bonded at the highest, right, the carbocation that was most stabilized, and the minor product where the carbocation was stabilized. But you would still see two alcohols at really high temperatures. Okay, so going back um, to the mechanism, we had a three step mechanism for the alkene reacting with water to make the alcohol. Three steps, total of two intermediates, endothermic, exothermic, and then about the same, or exothermic, so that would be C. So I just want to review a bit on what we expect to, uh, for the for sort of the big ideas on SN1 versus SN2 that was in worksheet 2. So SN1 reactions, <clears throat> the rate depends on the, uh, the carbon, the number of carbons bonded to the carbon that has the leaving group. So tertiary is going to be faster than secondary, secondary is going to be faster than primary, 
and this is primarily due to cat carbocation stability. The mechanism is a two-step mechanism with the slow step being unimolecular. In the first step, the carbon, the leaving group, this bond is broken, leaving group leaves. That's step one. In step two, the nucleophile opportunistically reacts with the carbocation to form two different products, right? Can it form on either side of this planar structure like we talked about in class? So in SN1, we do not get a pure product. We get a 50-50% mixture of two different products um, in the chemical reaction. So no pure chiral product. The rate loss, since the uh, slow step is unimolecular, we would expect that it would be overall first order. And looking at the energy diagram, if the carbon leaving group bond is weaker than the carbon nucleophile bond, I mean it could be either way, but in this case let's say it's weaker, then we would see something like this. We'd have an intermediate overall exothermic and um, that would be for SN1. Okay, so for SN2, a slightly different story, like we talked about in class. The rate is based on the activation energy. That steric hindrance is lowest for the primary versus secondary. Secondary and tertiary is the greatest. So the activation energy goes up, and the rate goes opposite. So the fastest rate for is going to be for primary versus tertiary because of that. The mechanism, it's only a one-step mechanism. The slow step is bimolecular. So we show the stereochemistry here. So here we have the carbon with the leaving group. The nucleophile has to come in to initiate the reaction. This is totally, this is very different than the SN1. It forms this transition state where the nucleophile is pushing out the leaving group and if the reaction takes place, then we see the fold over. The hydrogen that was to the left is now to the right end of the plane. And the nucleophiles to the left. In this case, we have 100% one product, unlike the SN1 where we have 50-50. So 100% chiral product. And if we use the same mechanism, if the leaving group is weaker than the nucleophile, in this case, we only see a single step with the transition, no um, an overall exothermic. So keep in mind, for exam four, worksheet one, worksheet two, as we just discussed with SN1, SN2, the mechanism, how we were able to get um, the rates based on the data shown, energy diagrams, the mechanism, and then unit seven, which is what we did in class, um, oxidizing agents. Right, so this general reaction, then SN1 and SN2, oxidation states, and reduce redox, which is redux, reduction in oxidation agents and molecules. All right, good luck, everyone.